We have a very senior member of the uh, TCS community with us. Why don't you um, share a little bit about yourself before I ask you some Janet questions. And, and thanks, John, for very nicely introducing about TCS. And it's a great uh, project which we did on in Nasik. He talked about the Kumbh wherein millions of people come and take a holy dip in the river. And one of the things which we said, just to give a background, he talked about Chandra, who's the chairman of Tata Sons. The, we obviously, as a company, we are there in the business to make profit. But every $1 we make as a profit, 66 cents goes in charity. Rest of it goes to the individual uh, shareholders like many of us in the room or outside. So for, if you didn't follow it totally, the GE of India, which is this amazing company, is a trust. It's, a, it's, it's, not, it's not about the bottom line. It's about raising money that goes back. Raising money and goes back. And that's what our founder about 150 years back, when, we, when he set up the first unit, the whole thing was you get a lot of from the society. How do you give it back to the society? That's the ethos. That's the foundation, the whole group and the TCS set up, just to you know, take that point from there. Uh, as we see as a company, as a consulting firm, which has, does everything, whether you talk about infrastructure services, IT, digital, everything, what we are seeing in the past couple of years, the growth is happening in the digital world. And we've been there in the business of almost 50 years. We have a good amount of contextual knowledge of our customers' business. So the point comes down, how do we leverage today's technology to deliver that superior user experience to our customers? And that's where we uh, take all the technologies, and that's where more than four and a half percent of the growth, or four and a half times of the growth, which TCS has, comes from digital technologies. And that's where we're creating a difference for our enterprise users. I get very excited when I'm in the conference like this, when the people talk about what's happening in the consumer world. I always think, how do we take that experience to the enterprise world? Because Person is a person. I'm a consumer of a technology when I'm this side of this uh, you know, table. If I walk into the office, I become the enterprise user. So that's where so we are yeah. looking at. So let me just, so we, you know, you, we have your, your name, your title, but maybe say a little bit, what, what are you worried about? What, what are you, what, what's your domain? What are you charged with? Just give our audience a sure. of that. So I run a couple of businesses for TCS, for the customers, where a specific focus is how do we deliver outcomes, better user experience to our customer. So that's a very short introduction about myself, being company for more than 23 years. And that's where we want to leverage our business knowledge of our consumers, our customers, and how do we deliver them a user experience? How do we make them live in today's world? How do we make them relevant in the customer, in the business domain they are in? So that's where, uh, from my background perspective. Sure. So Kenodia, who I got to know, who was one of the early heads of TCS, said that he was the one that created outsourcing where he said to you know, the US and other people, we will work during other hours and we will do stuff more efficiently and hire us. But I have a feeling that's not the business model of today and that you want to be the best at things, not just the one that's efficient you know, in, in the back office. And, and I think where we're going to go in this AR conversation, I think leads to how you guys can be leaders in AR. So my first question is, um, how are you applying, like, well, one, is, when I say AR, do you think of accounts receivable or augmented reality? <laughs> Probably if you asked me this question five years back, I would say account receivable, but today I would say augmented reality, for sure. <laughs> okay. So, so, okay, that's good. So we're on the same language. All right. So how are you applying augmented reality to solve business problems? Sure. So as I talked about the contextual knowledge, what we are looking at for our customers, what does it mean for them? If you look at it to the large corporation, they're looking at how can I be ahead of my competitors? How can I be more operationally efficient? How can I take out from the, from the business operation so that I can take that dollar out and spend on the investment which I can make to be more productive or more efficient in the marketplace? So what we have seen, we work for one of the large turbine manufacturer, wherein they have these turbines installed at very remote locations. And if there's a problem in the turbine, the engineer would have to travel, he would carry tons of uh, manuals with, with him and try to fix a problem. And that's where we brought in the augmented reality, that the person goes with a Microsoft HoloLens, and once he looks at the physical asset, he has a digital twin, which is overlaid on the physical asset. And he is guided through what he needs to do, looking at what is not going right from the digital twin to the physical asset. And he goes through the whole process to fix the issue which he needs to be done. In the earlier world, he would go there, he would look at it, he'd say, oh no, I need to have something else, 
or I need to bring a different part, he'll make frequent trips. We are going to save that manufacturing $300 million in this field service operation alone. And not even talking about the customer delight, because I'm sure you would have a leaking tap at your home. You just think of it, plumber making three trips just to fix it, you would be absolutely frustrated. So that's what it means for the customer delight perspective, which is in addition to the operational efficiency which they can bring. So in. turbines, is that GE or you can't say that? I can't say that, okay, so. Great. All right, so you didn't, <laughs> I didn't say that, okay. Yeah. All right, so what are, so are there, um, do you try to do things and they're, and you lose or are you winning? Like when you, when you, you know, send in a team and you give a, a suggestion of how to implement AR, you know, what, what's happening? So the whole thing is, if you look at the industrial world or any uh, industry which we pick up, there's a tons of data coming from everywhere. And what we believe in, by looking at the data which we have, and our chairman, uh, Chandra, you talked about, he wrote an article, he says, data is the oil of tomorrow because it's gonna be the most important asset any company will have. Today, data is coming in an enterprise coming from their production floor, their manufacturing unit, their supply chain, their customers, their suppliers, and to add that the social data is coming in. So it's becoming more of a melting pot. How this data is coming in, and how do we convert the data into an asset, an insight, which we can go to the specific person who is gonna be our business user. So the whole thing comes down to how do we bring design thinking in everything which is being done at a particular industry, and how do we create a persona-based insight which can provide to the person, it can be a CFO, it could be head of HR, as my uh, colleague talked about just earlier. It could be a person who is a supply chain leader, plant engineer. It could be the person who is managing or running a particular machine. It could be an investment banker who is investing for a client. How do we provide that persona specific insight to make him more agile, make him more smart, and make him more efficient and more productive as he brings this technology in to be to, to his business or to the work which he does. So, you know, I think AR and Action's uh, pretty well respected at this point. Say this video is sent to um, all Fortune 1000s. Yeah. What do you want to say to them so they call you up within five seconds saying we need to help get you involved in helping us with the future? What, what do you want to say to them to scare them about why they need you, you <laughs> to help with the, the AR future? So my, uh, what I would say is we know your business. We know the business problem which you're going through. We know the technology which is there in the marketplace. We can make it happen for you wherein you gain market share in the marketplace. You are more operationally efficient. You have better money. You have more dollars which you save, which adds to your bottom line to invest, which will make you smarter in the marketplace. So you have a lot of talented people on your, your, your team. How are you getting them up to speed uh, in AR? Like, is, is that, uh, like what are the um, milestones you're setting and um, you know, what are you finding in, in trying to get your team up to speed before you can even uh, you know, reach out and do the feedback loop with customers? So the fundamental belief which we have at TCS is technology is legacy. People are never legacy. Because people have significant amount of intellectual knowledge about the work which we do and the business which they are in. How do we bring those people who know about the business, how do we train them the specific technology and make them relevant in the marketplace? Because technologies keep on changing and there is a um, you know, lot of uh, you know, articles about it, the second half of the chessboard. If technology is changing so quickly, we would always be chasing technology. But what is something which is, does not change that much is about the business. How do we train, and that's where we looked at it. If Anupam you know, learned technology about 25 years back or 20 years back, how does he stay relevant? Two things, first, obviously he has to have that intent because people need to stay relevant, they need to learn technology. Second, what is the platform available? If he keeps traveling, how does he get into a classroom? And that's where TCS, we developed a platform called Fresco Play, wherein anybody can attend any course anytime. It has world-class content wherever it's available and person can do at his convenience. And he's, the whole system, the platform is gamified. So if somebody does a course, he gets some uh, mileage points or we call karma points and that can be monetized for him. Side by side, he needs to take an exit test because he needs to make sure that he has acquired those competencies. He's just not attending the course. He attended those competencies which he can be used 
TCS, we have roughly 380,000 people spread across more than 50 countries. We want to make sure all of our associates, they stay relevant, they stay in time what's happening in the technology. And that's where we want them to be aware and we want them to obtain augmented reality, what it means for them to deliver those benefits to their customers. So, you know, when you have a relationship with your customers, you help solve problems for them around big data, IoT, cybersecurity. Is AR going to be something that's going to give you a competitive advantage, or do you think it's going to be a fad and, um, you know, like 3D TV and people don't want to talk about it? I mean, uh, there could be multiple views how people see augmented reality. That was funny, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people think there's a lot of hype cycle happen in technology. But what I believe as a person who's both consumer and as an enterprise user, we believe it will make me more efficient, it will, it will make me more smarter, and we are working on multiple use cases. For example, uh, you know, one of the, uh, the, the problem statement which we are working with some of our customers is, as a passenger, I am at the airport, and recently I was traveling to Asia, you talk about, you, you, you said you make three trips a, a year, and I think you travel to India more than I do, but definitely I was connecting a flight, it was a seven hour layover. It's four. Four, okay. <laughs> Seven hour layover, I was sitting at the lounge and just before, half an hour before the departure, somehow I fall asleep. And when I wake up, I realize I have to rush. I don't know where the gate was and, uh, and I reached 20 minutes. They said, no, the gate is closed, you cannot board the flight. Just think of it, seven hours and the next flight was after two hours. So nine hours, I was waiting at the airport. And that's where we co developed a complete augmented reality application. We're in person on the mobile device, he can, Everything is tracked. Once you have the boarding pass, mm -hmm. everything is there. You know, when you need to be gate, what time there needs to be an alarm, what is the direction, if you have time, you don't want to sit in the lounge, what shopping you can do, what are the interests you have, you want, to, you want to, you know, have a drink. So the whole thing can be set up, guided, so you don't lose uh, any time and you don't miss the flight. For me, I don't want to miss next flight. It can guide me and be there at the right time. So here's the last question. What don't you know on how to construct this AR world? You know, you plan to help, um, you know, I think enterprise is going to lead in the AR, you know, billion dollar market. But if, if there's something missing and you can't figure it out, you won't be able to implement, you won't be able to lead and AR will be delayed. What's keeping you up at night? Maybe there's someone here who can help be a solution or someone who would want to collaborate um, uh, or someone could, uh, yeah. So what, 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 what's not working now that you'd like to figure out? What, what are you, like, you know, how do we do this? So what Hardware, software, computer vision? I think hardware, software, computer, so the fundamental what we believe in, the ecosystem. So we would look at a specific industry. Now it's gonna be a much more manning of multiple industries. So if you look at it, an automobile industry, you're talking about you know, self-driving cars, whatever you may have, or the Uberization. If they're gonna be automobile, it would be requiring steel. So it will go to the steel industry, or then it, you need the ore, you go to the mines. How do we create a complete ecosystem right from pit to port? So right when you excavate to, to the time the car is delivered to the consumer who's going to drive or a company who are going to have or the driverless, whatever you want to have, how do we connect the whole ecosystem? How do we excite all the components, all the multiple industries over there, wherein they, they can see the vision which could be there, which digital technologies can bring in, and it could be rightly integrated from the augmented reality perspective as well, wherein the whole thing is tied in what you need to have, what you need to do. Mm -hmm. That's where the world is. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Enterprise.